a lot of you guys have pets and if you have pets you know how much they enhance our life how they become part of your family and this was a super hard decision i wasn't even sure if i wanted to share this with you because just you know the nature of what it is but a lot of you guys have created a bond with Koda throughout the years either from watching her on OK Baby or from following me on my channel and why not? You have invested in my life for almost two years so I thought why not share how we adopted Koda before we share how it was her last day here with us so here we go when I was little a dog jumped on me and was licking me and scratching me all over and I developed a fear for dogs all the way to the point when we adopted Koda the reason why we adopted Koda was because my dad, who passed away, he used to have two great Pyrenees, a male and a female. And after his funeral, I just really wanted a great Pyrenees. And all of a sudden, on Facebook, I see a post. Lost dog. Does anybody know what breed this is? And I was like, it's a great Pyrenees, and if you don't find the owner, I would love to adopt it. Long story short, the guy posted flyers all over La Crescena, Montrose, everywhere he could and he didn't find the owner so private messaged me and said hey do you want to come and check it out and see if it's a good fit for your family because it is a pretty large dog and i had shared with him that i was afraid of dogs so we went oh my gosh you guys the cutest thing happened because while Koda was a pretty large dog she came to me stood up and gave me a hug like she literally put her pot behind my neck like letting me know hey it's okay i want you you want me let's make this happen so Cora chose us guys, there was another family that was interested but the guy who had her was like, oh my gosh, no, you guys have to have this dog. So we brought her home and she became part of our family. She became Amy's best friend. Amy took care of her 100%. She fed her, she walked her, she everything. They were besties for life. <laughs> So this couple of weeks has been pretty hard because her health was just deteriorating. There was something wrong and then there's something wrong and then there's something wrong. And Amy will explain that in the next clip. Two months in May, like the end of May, I took it to the vet because she was bleeding poop. They did blood tests and x-rays and everything was fine. She's perfectly healthy. They sent me back with something for her bloody. And then right after that, I had to go back for a vaccine, but when I went back for a vaccine, her hips were giving out, so then I told them about that, and then they gave me some pain relievers for her hips. Two days after I gave her the pain relievers, she started to get like balls swelling on, the, on her ankles, and like could barely walk. So then I went back, and then they told me, okay, she has a skin disease, and then gave me more pain medications, whatever. So then I was just over them, because then she kept getting worse and worse, and then... So we took it to the different vet, yeah. the nicer people. So then I took her to the vet. She gives me a call later saying that she has a stomach mass, which they don't know what it is. So that's a big problem. And then she has scoliosis for dogs. It's like espondylitis. Yeah. And that's um, making her back legs weak. So her back legs basically do not work at all. So she can't walk on her own. And then she started pooping blood again. And yeah. No. And then they told me that she's going to have to be on pain medication for the rest of her life. And so the past five days, I've been laying down next to her, and she literally needs to be watched 24-7. So she said whenever we're ready to put her down, we have to put her down. And I think that we are ready. Finally, we got answers from a bed that said, okay, you know, she is in chronic pain and will have to be on pain medication. And Amy thought, well, if I can make it work, if she's comfortable and she can still get up and you know be happy why not the last week i mean amy was spending 24 7 with her sleeping in the same room and it got to a point where amy had to physically lift her to go to the bathroom to eat and Kura was only happy when she was being pet and that's just not a life that we want for someone that you love honestly it was kind of nice for us that we were able to stay with Kura for the entire process we were petting her Baby, you're my favorite puppy ever, and thanks for being the best puppy for seven years, and my best friend for seven years. Now let's eat all their treats. <laughs> 
and we were feeding her treats and she was calm and relaxed and that was i think really good for amy and i to see because even though i was really sad and obviously we were crying and sad that we had to let go of her Cora was relax and calm like okay i got this this is it's okay i'm ready to go so she seemed okay so when we finally made the decision we wanted for her to have a very good day and thankfully she did that day she was able to take a few steps outside in the yard and we fed her a steak that amy cooked for her Ooh, super yummy there's so much steak sit good to share you have to share. Mm. Uh, when we took her in, we were able to stay with her through the entire process. And if any of you guys are faced with this decision, I know it's really sad, but I felt that Koda was really relaxed and calm because we were there. We were able to be with her. We brought her blankets so she could smell familiar smells. And Amy and I kept petting her through the whole entire process. And she just seemed relaxed and calm. So. I don't wish this on anyone, but if you ever have to go through that, stay with your pet. Uh, we asked them, like, please, we don't want to cause any more anxiety. And they were so nice and let us stay throughout the process. Casey and Kaden didn't get to go. It was only two people could go because of COVID. And I think that's better, even though it was harder for them to understand, like, what do you mean? She's going to be gone. She's going to go to sleep and not wake up. Is she okay? Um... I think it was best this way. Amy and I were there. We saw it. We were able to say, okay, this is the best thing for her. We saw how peaceful she looked and how humane, I guess, <laughs> the process is or was. Um, Casey and Kenan had a hard time. Obviously, they miss her. Casey keeps asking, like, is she okay? Is she going to forgive us? Is she going to forget us? Is she is her spirit here with us? Is she lonely? Can we ever get caught in a different bed? So a lot of spiritual questions that I think are kind of common when it comes um, to dealing with death, either a pet or a family member. But I think they understand that Koda wasn't doing well. We know now that she had a tumor that was spreading quickly throughout her body and that she was not happy. And so I think that helps them understand like, okay, this is something that had to happen. So I am a strong believer that some things happen for a reason and that certain people or pets come into your life to teach us lessons and then when those lessons are learned it's time to move on and i feel that Cora was here for amy i feel that she was here to protect her to love her and to show amy a lesson and now that, that lesson has been learned and amy has moved out and moved on Cora was ready to to go as well so perhaps she's with my dad that's what my sister and i said <laughs> Anyhow, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your love, for your support. I know that a lot of you guys have this connection with Koda through the internet. So thank you. Thank you for loving her. And see you next time. Bye. Sit him down. <laughs> she wants to be pet, guys. When she does that, that means pet me. <laughs> <laughs> gentle, 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 gentle. <laughs> Really
life, guys. I love you, Cole, I love you.